The Computer and the Brain by John von Neumann Part 2 Logical Control Beyond the capability to execute the basic operations singly, the computing machine must be able to perform them according to the sequence, or rather, the logical pattern, in which they generate the solution of the mathematical problem that is the actual purpose of the calculation in hand. In the traditional analog machines, typified by the differential analyzer, this sequencing of the operations is achieved in this way. There must be an a priori enough organs present in the machine to perform as many basic operations as the desired calculation calls for, i.e. enough differential gears and integrators. These, i.e. their inputs and output disks, or rather the axes of these, must then be so connected to each other by cogwheel connections in the early models and by electrical follower arrangements in the later ones, as to con constitute a replica of the desired calculation. It should be noted that this connection pattern can be set up at will. Indeed, this is the means by which the problem to be solved, i.e. the intention of the user, is impressed on the machine. This setting up occurred in the early machines by mechanical means, while in the later machines it was done by plugging. Nevertheless, it was in all these types always a fixed setting for the entire duration of a problem. In some of the very last analog machines, a further trick was introduced. These had electrical plugged connections. These plugged connections were actually controlled by electromechanical relays, and hence they could be changed by electrical simulation of the magnets that closed or opened these relays. These electrical stimuli could be controlled by punched paper tapes, and these tapes could be started and stopped and restarted and restopped by electrical signals derived at suitable moments from the calculation. <coughs> Logical tape control. The latter reference means that certain numerical organs in the machine have reached certain preassigned conditions, e.g., that the sign of a certain number has turned negative, or that a certain number has been exceeded by another certain number, etc. Note that if numbers are defined by electrical voltages or currents, then their signs can be sensed by rectifier arrangements. For a rotating disk, the sign shows whether it passed a zero position, moving right or moving left, a number is exceeded by another when the sign of their difference turns negative, etc. Thus, a logical tape control or better still, a state of calculation combined with tape control, was superposed over the basic fixed connections control. The digital machines started offhand with different control systems. However, before discussing these, I will make some general remarks that bear on digital machines and on their relationship to analog machines. The principle of only one organ for each basic operation. It must be emphasized, to begin with, that in digital machines there is uniformly only one organ for each basic operation. This contrasts with most analog machines, where there must be enough organs for each basic operation, depending on the requirements of the problem in hand. It should be noted, however, that this is a historical fact rather than an intrinsic requirement. Analog machines could, in principle, be built with only one organ for each basic operation, and a logical control of any of the digital types to be described below. It should be noted, furthermore, that some digital machines deviate more or less from this only one organ for each basic operation principle. But these deviations can be brought back to the orthodox scheme by rather simple reinterpretations. In some cases, it is merely a matter of dealing with a duplex or multiplex machine with suitable means of intercommunication. I will not go into these matters here any further. The consequent need for a special memory organ. The only one organ for each basic operation principle necessitates, however, the providing for a larger number of organs that can be used to store patterns numbers passively, the results of various partial intermediate calculations. That is, each such organ must be able to store a number removing the one it may have stored previously, accepting it from some other organ to which it at the time connected, and to repeat it upon questioning, to omit it to some other organ to which it is at that other time connected. 
such an organ is called a memory register. The totality of these organs is called a memory. And the number of registers in a memory is the capacity of that memory. I can now pass to the discussion of the main modes of control for digital machines. This is best done by describing two basic types and mentioning some obvious principles for combining them. Control by control sequence points. The first basic method of control, which has been widely used, can be described with some simplifications and idealizations as follows. The machine contains a number of logical control organs called control sequence points with the following function. In the simplest mode of using this system, each control sequence point is connected to one of the basic operation organs that it actuates, and also to the memory registers which are to furnish the numerical inputs of this operation, and to the one that is to receive its output. After a definite delay, which must be sufficient for the performing of the operation, or after the receipt of a performed signal, if the duration of the operation is variable and its maximum indefinite or unacceptably long, this procedure requires, of course, an additional connection with the basic operation organ in question. The control sequence point actuates the next control sequence point, its successor. This functions in turn in a similar way according to its own connections, etc. If nothing further is done, this furnishes the pattern for an unconditioned repetitionless calculation. More sophisticated patterns obtain if some control sequence points, to be called branching points, are connected to two successors and are capable of two states, say A and B, so that A causes the process to continue by way of the first successor and B by way of the second one. The control sequence point is normally in state A, but it is connected to two memory registers, certain events, in which will cause it to go from A to B, or from B to A respectively. Say the appearance of a negative sign in the first one will make it go from A to B, and the appearance of a negative sign in the second one will make it go from B to A. Note, in addition to storing the digits of a number, as above, a memory register usually also stores its sign, plus or minus, for a two-valued marker suffices. Now, all sorts of possibilities open up. The two successors may represent two altogether disjunct branches of the calculation, depending on suitably assigned numerical criteria, controlling A to B, while B to A is used to restore the original condition for a new computation. Possibly, the two alternative branches may reunite later, in a common later successor. Still another possibility arises when one of the two branches, say the one controlled by A, actually leads back to the first mentioned branching control sequence point. In this case, one deals with a repetitive procedure, which is iterated until a certain numerical criterion is met, the one that commands A to B. This is, of course, the basic iterative process. All these tricks can be combined and superposed, etc. Note that in this case, as in the plugged type control for analog machines mentioned earlier, the totality of the electrical connections referred to constitutes the setup of the problem the expression of the problem to be solved, i.e. the intention of the user. So this is, again, a plugged control. As in the case referred to, the plugged pattern can be changed from one problem to another. But, at least in the simplest arrangement, it is fixed for the entire duration of a problem. This method can be refined in many ways. Each control sequence point may be connected to several organs, stimulating more than one operation. The plugged connection may, as in an early example dealing with analog machines, actually be controlled by electromechanical relays, and these can be, as outlined there, set up by tapes, which in turn may move under the control of electrical signals derived from events in the calculation. I will not go here any further into all the variations that this theme allows. <laughs>